I was too busy going down the rabbit hole about Brian Dable and whether tight ends matter in his offense. What did you find? Spoiler alert, they don't. <laughs> right? Maybe, maybe it's not Charles Clay. I mean, availability is the best ability, right? Availability is the best ability. But maybe if you're available, you're still not all that important. I don't know. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was a short episode. <laughs> we don't need any tight ends, guys. Yeah, right. Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. So Brian Dable's still employed. Oh, Dorsey. They hired his replacement. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They hired his replacement. That is. Hilarious. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's they. They do believe that Brian Dable can lead this offense. Otherwise, he wouldn't be employed. Why That's did we take so simple. much heat for that, though? I don't understand why. Because I explained it to you in very simple terms in this respect, and maybe you guys can see this as well. And I know because it was. It's like someone trying to gauge emotion out of a text message. You yeah. can't do it. So let me let me explain it this way. Paul and I go in for a job interview. Okay, we're interviewing for the same position. Okay, he gets the job. Okay, because I'm better looking. True story. Two years later, um, they hire me to work under him, but I interviewed for the job that he had. You've been unemployed since. I've been unemployed since. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you've been unemployed since. Yes. And that's why it would bother me with the quarterback timeline as far as Josh Allen goes. Mm -hmm. All right, I just want to say this real quick. Josh Allen gets drafted in April. They don't sign Derek Anderson until October. And then they just hire Ken Dorsey. Yeah. Well, if you're if all, you're all about developing Josh Allen, why didn't all of those things happen simultaneously? Right. Anderson and Dorsey weren't in the league last year. They right. should have been. Well, now there was Bar well, Barkley had been kicking around, too. Yeah, May 1st should have been when they got all three of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To go ahead and take a look at, you know, the connections that you have. Derek Anderson yeah. was a quarterback for Brian Dable. And well, he was in Carolina. And now you're bringing in Ken Dorsey, who was the quarterback's coach in Carolina. Well, here's my point. <clears throat> Does this go back to the ego? They can coach anybody up? Because you got to think about it this way. Here's, here's how I think about it. In this respect, and maybe I'm insane. You could tell me if I'm insane. You guys could tell me if I'm crazy. All right. Dable goes through all of last year. Little bits and pieces are added to help him develop Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. What did I say when they first had Dable? I, I'm, I'm questioning whether or not he can develop quarterbacks. If yeah. he can develop Allen. Yeah. What happens? In tears. They keep hiring more and more people to try to help yeah. develop Josh Allen. That's not Brian Dable. Yeah. It's do you weird. Think, do you think that was because the the offense was just such a mess? They knew they had no resources invested in the offense. Well, they had nothing. They had nothing. But why would you need to get all these other pieces in place for it, though? You know Dable didn't say, yeah, bring Dorsey here. I would like to know how that conversation went. Oh, my right? God. That's, that's got to be weird. It's got to be very, very it's weird. It's got to be strange, right? It, that, that had to be a strange conversation. Because you know that he interviewed for this job yes. previously. Yes. And while he may not have interviewed in the rounds when Dable was hired, he was when Dennison was hired. Yeah, true. It's, it is very peculiar. So it, it does make you wonder. Um, now, Dorsey has no coordinator experience at all. Zero. On any level. No coordinator experience. Dorsey? Yeah, no coordinator experience at all. But I'm pretty sure he called out his own plays in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dable. Brian Dable. And the importance and, of a tight end in a Brian Dable offense. So I went back and I pulled some stats. Okay. Pre-Bills. Pre-Bills? Pre-Bills. Because Pre Dable, this is now year six for him. He's entering year six as a coordinator, which again... When you start talking about bringing in your own guys, don't you think an offensive coordinator with six years of experience now would should be able to pick his own position coaches? Not if nobody likes him. Or if he's just not good and they're just waiting to move on. Hey, you want to come to Buffalo? Hello? Hello? Regardless, you would think that the offensive coordinator True. He, he, should He would have made some contacts in that respect. 
Yeah, should, um, should be able to help. But um, I to- I pulled all the pre Brian Dable or the pre Bills Brian Dable data, and here's where we go. Now, mind you, I'm including the quarterbacks that he had because I think that's important. Because you, a lot of people will say, well, the tight ends weren't productive because who was their quarterback? I do want to point out that Brian Dable, inside his division, has only ever finished out of last place twice. And the highest he's ever finished was second to last place. Twice. Bills were part of that last year. You sound like uh, Joe Piscopo in Johnny Dangerous League. <laughs> I'm just pointing out that that Dable's history as an offensive coordinator is not smart. In this chess match that you and I are playing, I, I'm we going, are posturing differently here. I I'm, going, I'm going to see your knight to king four. And what I'm going to counter with is that if you have inexperienced and or young quarterbacks on your roster that are just learning, what is the best safety valve? Your tight end. Okay. Yeah. Continue. In 2009 uh, and 2010, here are the quarterbacks that had to play. Brady Quinn, <laughs> Eric Anderson, Colt McCoy, Jake DeLome, and everybody's favorite 2009 uh, Madden player Seneca Wallace. Literally everybody loved Seneca Wallace. Because <laughs> he was the quarterback that you'd pick up when your quarterback got a season-ending injury, and he would just run all over the place. He was always there. He was always a free agent. Why did anyone agent. ever pick him up? I don't know. He was always a free agent, but he was everybody's favorite bad quarterback was <laughs> Seneca Wallace. <laughs> all right. So, with that being said, in 09, with Brady Quinn and Derek Anderson, Robert Royal was the tight end with most targets, 26. 26? 26 targets. That's it. In 2010, he had oh. Benjamin Watson. Big difference between Robert yes. Royal and Ben Watson. Big, big difference. His quarterbacks were Colt McCoy, Jake DeLone, and Seneca Wallace. Ben Watson had 102 targets. Wow. It's a ton. Who was his receivers? Well, yeah, exactly. Nobody? Josh Cribbs was there. Um, who oh. else was there? Uh, well, that was the height of the Browns dynasty, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was. Their, their receiver group wasn't very good. No. Uh, maybe the guy with the last name I can't Edwards? pronounce. Um, I don't know if Edwards was there at that time. Okay. All right. Well, that's a lot. Um, I'm that's surprised That's 102 that is a ton, right? That's a great... In 2011, he was in Miami. His quarterbacks were Matt Moore, uh, Chad Henney, and for six packs, pass attempts, J.P. Lossman. Shut your front door. <laughs> there we go. Six six glorious pass attempts in Miami. Um, Anthony Bassano was his leading tight end, 54 targets. 54 targets. Targets. Bassano came uh, highly regarded out of Notre Dame. I remember that. Yep. And in 2012, he was with Matt Castle and Brady Quinn again uh, with Kansas City. Tony Moyaki. Moyaki! I remember Moyaki. This was coming off a year that he had missed 2011, the injury. Okay. Right? So he's coming back in 2012. Oh, okay. 56 targets. Hmm. So if you go ahead and do the math, Ben Watson had 102 targets in 2010. Fusano and Moyaki combined for 110 targets the next two seasons. So you ask me hmm. how big a role is the tight end? I've got I've got one outlier, and it's Benjamin Watson, who's been killing it in the league forever. That tells me talent. That doesn't tell me scheme. That tells me talent. He relies heavily on talent. Is what yeah. you're saying? If the guy doesn't. Yeah, it's he's not going to scheme the tight end open. That's it. Mm. He's not going to scheme the tight end open. Um, that's what these years tell me. And then we look at the Bills. I see zero difference. There's zero difference. My point is this, because this is obviously circling all around Clay. That Brown season where Ben Watson had the most targets, yeah. you think he didn't have any wide receiver talent. What did the Bills not have yeah. a lot of wide receiver talent? Yeah. Why wouldn't Clay? Well, got to be available. Or any of the other tight ends. Right. Yeah. So everybody talks about Kroom, and Kroom is an exciting player because he can break – he can break – a game open with one play, but he's not your grinder tight end. I, I think we run into a problem with identity here. Uh, we talk about a lot. I don't know what Brian Dable wants to do with identity, but I can tell you with the tight ends that he's had, they're grinder tight ends. They are. We're gonna we're gonna help you in the run game, and we're gonna sneak out not every now and again. You're saying they're gonna they're gonna we're gonna have three tight ends that make two point five million a year, and that are gonna be able to block. And right. catch three passes a game right. if we need them to. Yep. 
I mean, Watson was clearly the best athlete out of them. Robert Royal, I think you just inherit, right? Yeah. Um, and then you had Fasano and Moyaki, who were both grinders. I remember picking Moyaki up in fantasy. It was pretty yeah. hilarious because I had no options left. Mm -hmm. But if I had known Dable was the OC, I would never pick him up. <laughs> uh, the point being is this. Does this further hammer home the point that Charles Clay is all but finished? I mean, you look at the production. With his cap number. You look at the production of these other tight ends that have played with Brian Dable, and I'm... Aren't, aren't you getting what you expected? I mean, is this is this really an outlier? I mean, I, I, the I problem is... It, the problems are missing time with injury. If Clay were healthy, I, I don't know if... I think we could put it into perspective. 40 catches? Well, I mean, 60 targets. I mean, that's right in line with where everybody else has been. Yeah. You're paying a lot more money for those 60 targets. Yes. But at this point, how much does money really matter? I mean, you're going to save 4.5, which is just going to be enough to sign his replacement. So what, why even do it? So you're saying they hold on to him because why not? He's going to be gone next year anyway? I mean, you, you cut him, right? You've saved 4.5, but it's going to cost you 4.5. So his salary is 9 mil. So you're paying, you're, you're counting 4.5 for Charles Clay on your salary cap, whether he's here or not. That doesn't matter. Yes. How much is it going to cost you to sign his replacement? Is it amount. more or less than 4.5? More. It's probably more, right? Is it more this year? No, Maybe they, not. Okay. But. Do they value spending money now more than getting rid of a player they don't really feel is going to be productive in their offense, number one? Number two. Does this throw a wrench in your plan to get Hawkinson? No. I I think Clay being on the team is, it makes, I think he becomes the handcuff, right? He You un, you know what he is. They're going to address the tight end position, right? If they don't okay. sign anybody in free agency, which is not a great free agency group anyway. So if they don't sign anybody in free agency, you have to imagine they're going to draft a tight end, right? You think? And you if, still think? I do. If they don't sign anybody in free agency, I'm imagining that they draft a tight end. Charles Clay ones. is still on the team. They have younger ones on the roster. Though. Well, let me finish this scenario. Go ahead. So, I'm sorry. What ends up happening is if you draft a tight end, keeping or cutting Charles Clay is inconsequential. He's there to see, okay, how long is this kid going to be able to float? Can, can we, is this kid going to be able to start week one? If the answer is yes, then you cut Charles Clay and you just move on. If the answer is no, then you got Charles Clay, and odds are he's going to be injured at some point anyway, and the kid that you drafted is going to get to start, but he might get a little bit of a running start into the season. So the case could be made very easily that Charles Clay stays. A lot of people are going to be frustrated because of injuries and lack of production, but you look at Brian Dable's offenses, they don't lean on the tight end. They don't. So unless he's, unless he's supremely talented. Well, and tell me that, and go ahead and tell me that these quarterbacks that he, that he had didn't need help. They do. They all needed help. If there were Brady any Quinn twice, Derek Anderson twice in Buffalo, Colt McCoy, Jake Delhomme, Seneca Wallace, Matt Moore, Chad Henney, J.P. Lossman, and Matt Castle, you're telling me that those quarterbacks couldn't have benefited from leaning on the tight end. Secure, Absolutely, they could have benefited. Security blankets. That. Yeah, they needed it, and he didn't give it to them. Maybe that's why the team sucked so bad. <laughs> <laughs> they need they needed the help and he he couldn't give it to them. Now is that on the player? Maybe is that on the scheme? I think so. But this season will bet that. In the minds of Bills fans and Brian D with Brian Dable, a lot of people can make mm. excuses for the way that the team performed, and they're valid. That's why he's still employed. They're valid excuses. Yeah. But by week four, you will know whether Brian Dable is going to be here. Uh, That's I mean, why I made a bet with Rock Pile Report. Oh yeah. I went double or nothing. I, I went, I went, I'm two Seagrams. Two Seagrams. Two. I doubled the bet because uh, I'm so confident lunch. Brian Dable will not finish the season as offensive coordinator. No. I'm so convinced. Two Seagrams. I think, I, I think that. Or two Seagrams. Did I, I Scarlet Witch you that time? I don't know. I mean, that was, I've listen, had better moments. Listen, I'll just say this. That, that roster, all those rosters you said, I don't even know who the running backs were. But I know that the defensive game plan was to make the quarterbacks beat the defense. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, how do you not include your tight end if you know that the, the defense is going to force your quarterback to beat you? Because mm -hmm. right. you, you don't have a high-profile quarterback. You're right. not a very talented one either. So no. it's interesting, though. The plot thickens on Brian Dable. <laughs>